everyone and welcome. Uh, today I will be talking about maximizing profits using technical analysis. For those of you that know me, my methodology and my trading style is based 99% on technical analysis and only 1% fundamentals. And uh, I'm going to tell you why that 1% is very important and especially now in earnings season. Uh, there can uh, be changes to the tape that are um, pretty much um, established by the numbers that are coming in. So even if you have, let's say, a very strong market, if you have some stocks that are reporting uh, weak earnings, uh, then the market may potentially be influenced by those specific stocks and uh, the indices will react as a chain reaction to it. All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, quick sound check, just wanna make sure that you guys can hear me. Type a one in the room. Uh, like I said today, I will be talking about how you can maximize profits as well using technical analysis, whether you're day trading, swing trading, uh, or even active investing in the market. Uh, be a smart investor and it not just uh, you know buy at the beginning of the year or when you put your hands on some money and say, hey, I want to buy some NVIDIA. I've always wanted to buy some NVIDIA, but wait for the proper time in the market to buy. And I think an educated trader is also going to be uh, a very profitable trader because it's going to maximize his or her odds. Uh, these methodologies that I will be talking about today, and we're going to review the market a little bit where I see the market heading into next week with everything that's going on in the world and with earnings. Uh, but this methodology can be applied to stocks, futures, uh, obviously options, and uh, forex, cryptocurrency, so pretty much anything that you're trading. Uh, please take a second to read our risk disclaimer. And basically what we're seeing here is that the information we're provided today is for educational purpose. And uh, uh, you should not risk your money unless you fully understand the risks that are involved. My name is Anka Metcalf, for those of you that are new and did not hear or see me talk at any of the presentations before. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which uh, is uh, a trading education company that is focused on educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and core trade the futures and the indices market. I've been doing this successfully for 17 years. I gave up my job 17 years ago to dive um, into this profession, and I've been doing it successful since then. Prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking and Trade Out Loud came about about 10 years ago. Um, I have mentored traders from, beginner, from beginners, like really beginners, traders that have not traded a day in their life to financial advisors, even hedge fund traders worldwide on futures, stocks, forex options, cryptocurrencies, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm also, presenter at uh, multiple, uh, multiple shows, uh, multiple pre presentations, uh, live or online speaker, educator, and author. My method is, uh, all, like I said, 99% technical and is based on a proprietary trading system. It's designed by, my, by me uh, and uh, I'm not the creator, so I just took the methodology and I have designed it so I can trade my own trading account sizes with it. Um, the method is relatively simple, but um, the, the thing is that price support resistance is not only supply and demand, and there are a lot of other aspects, and I will show you some of the aspects today on charts, and there are actually seven layers of price support resistance. So if you're only basing your strategy on supply and demand, well, that's you know probably 12, 13% of the whole uh, support resistance methodology. I also have developed a specific trigger times, and this is only for day trading, obviously, because you're taking a swing trade and you're taking a core trade when that trade sets off. But if you're a day trader, you don't want to waste your time and money. And I will talk in this presentation about these specific trigger times. Also specific price zones. This is something proprietary that we teach in class. Uh, and uh, there are four price points throughout the chart where 
uh, the price reacts. I can reveal one of the numbers for you, and these are fulcrum numbers. You can search for them on the internet. You're not gonna find anything on the topic uh, other than the whole number. But other than the whole number, there are three other numbers where you can set targets and you're often going to see price react. Either tap onto that specific number and then start pulling back and then breaking out again at that exact number. So the reality with the whole number, and uh, it's it, you know it's purely um, simplicity, right? It's purely simplicity. Everybody loves the whole number, and it's psychological, right? So if you go shopping now, and if you go, um, you know, go get a, an iPad, um, and let's say it's three hundred ninety-seven dollars. You know, when you get home with it and, you know, your best friend is going to come for a visit and when he's going to ask you how much did you pay for it, you're not going to say, oh, I paid $406.97. No, you're going to say, hey, I paid $400 uh, because it's for simplicity. And traders are the same way and the market works the same way. And uh, usually, and I'm going to show you some charts today. Uh, especially some charts in NASDAQ, some charts in the m and &E Dow, where you are going to see that numbers found resistance and found support at these whole number location. Uh, and this is a very interesting aspect. And this is exactly simplicity, you know? And the other thing that I pay attention to before I get into a trade is chart synchronicity. Chart synchronicity and divergence is very important. Whether you're trading stocks or whether you're trading futures, this is extremely important, and especially now in earnings season. You're going to see that oftentimes within the next three to four weeks, there is going to be more relative strength into one index than the other. And usually one index lags and the other index, uh, index or indices are a little bit more bullish. In our case, uh, for throughout this week, we had relative weakness in one index in particular. I don't know if you guys can type it here in the room. Do you guys know what I'm talking about within the four indices? Or, um, you know, if you're only a stock trader, the ETF for it. So I watch E-mini Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. But if you're a stock trader, of course, I'm a stock trader as well. And I, try, I watch the Qs, the Spice, the Diamonds, right? And I watch Russell. And Russell had relative weakness this week. And in fact, on Friday, the relative week had the upper hand because it dragged pretty much all the indices with it. And that was not the only reason, but usually, uh, usually I correlate them according to um, synchronicity and divergency. All right, so um, if you want to find out more about Trade Out Loud, you could go to our website. We offer classes. Uh, we uh, provide uh, trading services, trading rooms, um, uh, trading room, uh, swing trading uh, for stocks, uh, signals for futures, et cetera. So you could take a look at what we offer. You could also find us on social media with uh, the handle Trade Out Loud on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, and LinkedIn. And these are some of the things that uh, we are doing at Trade Out Loud. And uh, let's get into the presentation. So first off, I'm going to share with you um, a little bit about the futures market. Uh, obviously, the, the core the, today's presentation is geared more at futures, but I will make reference to stocks as well uh, today. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, um, I, I have a lot of traders that I have known throughout my trading career uh, for the last 20 years, and um, most of the traders that know me from back then, they know that I have started my trading career in stocks. And I was a very aggressive stock trader. I have day traded stocks, swing trading stocks, active investing in stocks and ETFs for a very long time. But I wanted an income producing style of trading without having all the homework that I needed to do before the market opened. Trading stocks is better than, uh, in my personal opinion, tr trading futures is, in my personal opinion, better than trading stocks because you don't have a lot of prep work to do. 
and they're not subject to earnings. Well, there are some things that you need to pay attention to, but there are no downgrades, upgrades, etc. At the time, there were way better commissions than in stocks. Now, stocks don't have commissions, so that is really good. But on the other uh, on the other hand, you can make money way faster, of course, if you know what you're doing when you're trading futures. Um, I specifically am not a big fan of trading options. The only options that I trade uh, are the options for high price stocks such as Google, Amazon, and that kind of price point. If I trade Apple, I would rather trade the stock, the common, than any than doing options. So my personal opinion is that if you have the money to trade the stock, trade the stock because it gives you way more flexibility. You can add to the trade. You can, you can still sit in the trade. You can earn a dividend in the trade. So to me, it's way more advantageous to trade stocks than to trade options. So I'm going to talk to you about trading futures 101 and why I switched to the futures market uh, about eight years ago. And I'm very happy for making the switch because it made my life so much easier. And I'm going to talk also about building the foundation for your next trade. So how do you find a next trade? What is the planning process for the next trade? And uh, how do you work the trade? Um, also, how to identify what to trade based on pure price action and technical analysis, because like I said, I am 99% technical, ana technical analysis trader. How technical analysis helps you identify directional bias with maximum accuracy and using like the simplest indicators that everybody has access to and a lot of traders are using them, even institutional traders. Um, there was a time of, of 20 years or even a little bit before where uh, these indicators and any indicator on any, uh, on any chart was not very popular because the majority of traders uh, were basically fundamental traders. And you guys know what I'm talking about if you tuned in to CNBC probably around uh, not that far, like five years ago, I would say five to six years ago, you would probably hear Kramer talk about fundamentals. He would have a lot of individuals, CEOs, et cetera, vice presidents that were invited into, uh, into the studio and they would talk about fundamentals. Uh, things have changed a lot throughout the years, and this is because of the presence and the increasing number of algorithms, uh, and things have become extremely technical. And now if you tune into um, you know, CNBC, for instance, you are going to see Kramer analyze charts, and uh, you will see a lot of uh, technical traders that are uh, sharing their charts with Kramer. And even throughout the day, they're inviting all sorts of traders to talk about technical levels. Now, if you have been in the market for as long as I have, you would pretty much say, yeah, you know what? I agree. You're right. Because, you know, even five to seven years ago, you would not hear a lot of discussion around technical analysis. I mean, technical analysis has been here for forever. It's just that, you know, a lot of individuals are taking advantage of technical analysis and creating all sorts of shiny indicators where if you have paid attention to, <laughs> if you have paid attention to, uh, to all the presenters uh, here today, you would have seen, you, you would see, you would have seen that uh, the majority of traders were price action driven, right? So all the actions were uh, basically, try, uh, basically based on price action. Uh, exactly, Mark, and I agree, you have to keep it super simple. And I'm going to share some charts with you. Unfortunately, Zoom has uh, changed uh, a lot of the things here, and I cannot share a chart with you, so I have to switch the screen. Uh, but I will, I will do that um, in a little bit later. So, um, how and, and again, how technical analysis pinpoints entry stops and targets because it's all about finding, uh, you know, a good entry, uh, applying a good, good stop so you don't stop out as often. I mean, that's the goal, right? And oftentimes the market does those slingshots, right? So it pulls in and then it triggers higher. 
Uh, and of course it helps, a technical analysis helps with targets and with trailing. I think one of the most important things about trading is, you know, trailing and, and there's not a lot of emphasis that is um, um, pointed to trailing. Because the reality is that, you know, if you have a trade that, let's say, you know, uh, meets your stop and you get stopped out. Well, that's part of your planning, right? Stopping out of the trade is part of the plan. But what happens if that trade starts moving higher? How do you trail it? You have to have a strategy in place for that and to make your process super, super simple. So you know that when your stock meets target one or when your commodity or futures index or et cetera, or even an options play, when it hits target one, what do you do? What is your reaction? So you need to have this super simple plan that will allow you to react exactly the same way any algorithm reacts. Uh, so why are we all here, guys? Well, because we all want financial independence. We all want to make money from the market. Uh, and the reality is that this is a recession proof skill and a recession proof job. And I wouldn't call it a job. It's more like a lifestyle. I go to the beach during the week. I take my phone or an iPad with me. And I obviously I'm not one of those traders that trades from the beach. No, but I just monitor the market. Uh, on Sunday night, of course, at six o'clock, I, uh, you know, made it a habit. I look and see where the market opens. I have alerts to see if the market opens up, opens down, etc. So you want to keep a tap on the market because the market is your, and your personal computer or your laptop becomes your personal ATM. So that's why you have to keep a gauge as to what the market is doing at each and every single time, because there may be some really good, uh, trading opportunities. Um, so trading is the hardest thing that you have ever done and I am not lying to you and you have to be extremely disciplined, extremely patient, uh, with your learning, with your learning, everybody's different. Everybody learns on a different pace and you have to put in the hours. It's not as easy as it sounds. Oh, you take, you know, you read a book, you get a book from Amazon, you pay 20 bucks for it. And then you, you know, you get it at home, you read it. You know, you read it in a night or two or maybe a week or a month. And then you're like, boom, I'm going to open a trading account and start trading. It doesn't work like that. Uh, and there are certain steps, steps that you need to take in order to become a profitable trader. Uh, and sometimes trading is very frustrating because trading is, you know, trading takes you on an emotional roller coaster and it's going to teach you so much about yourself. It's, you're going to discover things about yourself that you never knew. Uh, and on the other hand, it's very addicting because once you get into this game and you learn how to play it right, you can't, it's a, it's a lifestyle. So you can't go back to anything else. And, you know, first of all, and not last, it is very, very rewarding. And it's all about accumulating the game gains. Uh, and it's all about knowing how uh, to increase your account. And uh, there are certain ways to handle smaller accounts and there are different ways to handle bigger accounts. Um, so these are things that you're going to learn uh, as you move along. For instance, I teach a class. It is a five-day class and I teach traders, you know, how to trade futures or how to trade stocks or how to trade, um, you know, uh, how, to, how to invest in the market. Well, the reality is that the amount of information that I provide in the class is so much and the human mind is not capable of absorbing everything because the market is different every single day there are setups and there is symmetry and repetition through charts and this is what technical analysis is all about but the reality is that every day you're confronted with different economic reports different reactions in the market um, different earnings results. So n nothing is the same. So I truly agree with what Mark is saying about the information overload and purely cut all the information and just stick with everything that is very simple support, resistance, just a couple of moving averages, you know, volume that is very important because it gives you a lot of information, whether that concludes the momentum to the downside or it is con concludes the momentum to the upside. So there is a lot of information into that volume. So this webinar I have designed for traders that wanna follow the institutional footprints 
and that want to trade in sync with institutional money, with the institutional moves, with the momentum, with the trends, and to be in sync with definitely the institutional traders. So, um, so this, this is also for someone that is ready to eliminate frustration from trading. So because in, in trading, there is no room for frustration. There is, there is either a winning trade or a losing trade. And if you have a losing trade, you have to ask yourself, why is that a losing trade? Is that because you know, uh, is that because I did not respect my guidelines? Did I did not respect my rules? And if you have a winning trade, did I get just lucky in the trade? Because that's the worst thing that you could do for your trading. You could get lucky in a trade or two or three. And I've known traders that have been lucky for a couple of months and then they trash their account. So eliminate frustration from trading by basically looking at price action in a very simple way. Uh, looking at the oscillations, high to low, low to high, measuring, analyzing, and acting when you are sure of the pure directional bias. Uh, if you want to trade with clarity and stress-free, like I said, there's no room for frustration and there's also no room for average, right? You don't want to be average in trading. You want to, uh, you want to be amongst the best in trading because uh, in the market, like I said, more than 85 to 87 percent of the market volume is algorithmic trading. And you want to be in sync with those algorithms because the reality is that who is programming these algorithms? Institutional traders. Institutional traders are talking to computer companies and uh, they're programming their formula. So their uh, strategy, their, um, uh, their, uh, their computing it uh, into their system, right? So this is what an algorithm is. And they cannot program it based on, let's say, of, uh, you know, fundamentals, but they could definitely uh, uh, program it based on technical analysis. And this is simple technical analysis. And I'm talking about support resistance. I'm talking about moving averages. I'm talking about volume. These are the simple strategies that the act, algos act on. So who is ready to become consistent and eliminate the noise? I mean, I know I was, and uh, I had a lot of mentoring when I started you know, my career and I'm grateful for that. And I'm here to help any traders. And even if you guys are not my students, if I get emails from you uh, and, and I get literally thousands of emails a month and I'm really backed up, but uh, the reality is that, you know, there is no silly question when it comes to trading. And I try to do my best and answer, you know, all the questions myself uh, because most of them are technical questions. So if you're ready to learn a methodology that works in any asset, uh, you can only use one simple system, and that is the technical analysis. And I'm gonna share you a little bit about why I switch into futures trading. Well, first of all, and I'm gonna share with you a chart that is gonna be mind blowing. So for those of you that are stock traders here, it's not only the leverage, but you'll see. Um, if you're a stock trader, be prepared and be open-minded. And the more you become a global trader, what is a global trader? It's a trader that doesn't say no to other markets. So if you're a stock trader and say, hey, you know what? I just trade from nine o'clock to four o'clock and then I'm done. I don't want to look. There are opportunities that are happening outside of the U.S. market hours that affects the U.S. market. And you can take advantage of those, whether it is in gold. And you guys heard my uh, Jim uh, Kenny from Options Professor. He mentioned a um, movement in gold. I have also a position in gold. And I think that gold did a mini breakout this week. And it possibly there is a strong possibility that may continue higher. And uh, the reality is that if you want to day trade stocks, you have to have, you have to have a minimum, uh, an, uh, an, uh, an account, a minimum account of, uh, you open a minimum account of $25,000. And the reality is you need about 30 because if you open it uh, with 25 K, then guess what? You lose a penny and you can't, your day trading status is out the door. If you're opening a day trading account, then you have four to one leverage, a swing, a swing account, two to one, but also depends on the broker and what geographical region you're in. The other thing is that if you want to open, uh, if you want to open a futures trading account, 
um, there, you know, you can open an account with, with $5,000. That's a minimum requirement with the majority of the brokers out there. Um, and guess what? As long as you have sufficient cash in your account, you can have a balance of even seven to eight hundred dollars but if that balance covers the minimum margin requirement to trade a commodity or index, guess what? You can still trade. You can still trade. So you can trade micros. You can still have $600 in your account and trade micros. Your leverage is 10 to 1. I never trade on leverage, but there are, you can definitely use leverage to your advantage. So the, my sweet spot in uh, futures trading, and by the way, I was a Forex trader as well. I've traded Forex for many, many years. Now I trade, uh, I trade the currency pairs through futures. So I simplified my trading in one instrument, basically in one market, and that is the futures market. The sweet spot that I trade and I specialize in is the trade, is between 9.30 and 12 o'clock. So basically 9.30 and 11.30, 9.30 to 12 o'clock. So that's the period when I take my day trades. And that is my income producing salad trading. I have, um, I have several accounts out of which, you know, I have one for day trading, you know, I have another account for swing trading, another account for investing. So the investing account and the swing trading account, I keep them separate because these accounts uh, um, are um, longer term and you cannot access the cash. You cannot access your profits immediately. Uh, you may be a stuck in a trade for three days up to three months, or if you're an investor, you're probably gonna have trades in there uh, for a longer period of time, even years. So I'm going to talk about that, Mark, uh, and I generate most of my, not most of my profits, all my profits, all my day trading profits are uh, targeted into the first two hours because that is when the institutional influx is coming in. The, there is a strong volatility that comes in, and I have some rules. I don't initiate trades before the market opens. Before the market opens, actually when the market opens, there's a huge influx in volume, and you're going to see the price that it's going to try and find its new balance in the New York trading session. So it will be testing uh, prior highs, lows, uh, possibly secondary highs, lows, uh, from the overnight trading session before it settles down uh, into its original and in, 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 it, in reality into its true range. Uh, but the reality is that you have an overlap of the London session and the New York trading session that is creating that great follow through to targets. Uh, don't forget that we also have a big chunk of news that is coming out at around 8.30 uh, most of the days and I don't that's one of the reasons why I don't initiate trade before that I don't I don't trade news But this is me. There are traders that do that. You know, that's their thing. They have different uh, Hey, the reality is that everybody has a system and my system is not necessarily uh, 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 Better than other traders that trades Let's say at eight o'clock and puts a trades on it. They're all we all we're all making money I can make money in a long position There's another trader that counters my position on the pullback and makes money on it short. So there is um, Exactly, so there is no right and wrong Let's say into this market, but there is a right and wrong in methodology So I trade the sweet spot from 930 all the way to about a uh, 11.30 to 12 o'clock. If the market is not moving, and if, let's say, I'm in position and I have not achieved targets, I, you know, let's say uh, the market has not gone anywhere and the, my stop has not been violated, then, of course, I'm going to stay in that trade and manage to the trade until I close the trade. Sometimes I may even hold the trade overnight. So it has happened before. It has happened with a bonds trade that I had this week or one or two bonds this week. So uh, bonds trades this week. So it happens. But my sweet spot is between 9.30 and 11.30 when the uh, London market closes. So if you are a stock trader, you pretty much know that your schedule is from 9.30 to 4 o'clock Eastern, five days a week, where my schedule is basically around the clock, close to 24 hours a day, six days a week. The market opens tomorrow at 6 p.m. So don't forget one thing. If there's going to be any 
coronavirus development through the weekend or any other geopolitical events. I've read some headlines into yesterday's and this morning trading session that uh, we may have more news from Iran, from Iraq, et cetera, Baghdad. So these are all geopolitical contexts that weigh, uh, weigh into price action. So geopolitical events do not wait for the market to just open and say, hey, you know what? We're going to wait till tomorrow morning at 930. No, they happen. Events just happen. So like I said, events that happen outside of the New York trading session hours affect the U.S. market. So the reality is that, you know, would you rather wait to take advantage of that move? Well, it's, you know, well, it's happening right now. Or would you rather wait? You know, let's say you're in a trade, let's say you're in a swing trade, let's say you wanted, and there were some, uh, there was some uh, comments here in the room about some options trade. Let's say you, you uh, got some calls in, um, uh, in the queues, right? And the queues, let's say they gap down. So if you're a, if you're a futures trader, right? And if you trade futures, you could take advantage of that. You could have a hard stop. And if you see the price dip, maybe you buy the dip or maybe you even short. Okay, so you can take advantage of all these moves that are happening uh, throughout, uh, throughout the market. Let's not forget that this is election year. And usually in election years, you have a very bullish January, um, January, February, because January is coming from that January effect, right? We had window dressing uh, that wrapped up the year, and we had the year end, and that's usually very bullish for the market with Santa rally, et cetera. And then you have another phenomenon, which is January effect. And we just wrapped up the January effect. January effect usually is, uh, um, usually is about, let's say, like one to two weeks. But, it, but this time around, it was almost to the end of the month, right? Only the last week of, last week of the month. So it, it was pretty much for about three weeks, which was a little bit extended because it usually happens in the first two weeks. But in the first week in January, we had this um, um, uh, choppiness around, and then we resumed trading uh, basically after the first week in January. And I don't trade in the first week in January. The volume is very low, and I don't want to be washed out in trades. So if you're a futures trader, where are you gonna trade? Well, this is the whole panel. Now you know that if you're a stock trader, you pretty much are trading about 6,000 stocks and you need a scanner for that. You need you know, um, selection criteria, what stock to trade within that day, right? Because I know that traders are focused and say, hey, you know what, I'm just gonna be an Apple trader or I'm just gonna trade this or I'm just gonna trade that. Hey, use Flash. You're not a market maker. So you need to play what other traders are trading and what institutional traders are trading within that very day. Okay. So same with the same with futures. A lot of traders, you know, have blinders on and say, hey, you know what? I'm only trading the mini SP. I have traders that approach me all the time and say, hey, you know what? I want to learn your methodology, but I'm only trading the mini SP. Well, use Flash. Because my methodology that I'm teaching you is allowing you to have a pure selection criteria with what is in move that day. So for instance, this past week, we had huge um, 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 power and a, a massive move in NASDAQ. Why? Because NASDAQ was very, very hot and in play because of the earnings that came out of certain stocks, right? Apple, you saw Apple total full blast higher, new all-time high in Apple, uh, just blasting higher. And of course, Apple being a good component of NASDAQ, and also a component of the Qs, right? What do you think it did for the Qs? It created that relative strength compared to the rest of the indices. Now, when NASDAQ was just screaming higher, the Dow and the S&P were pretty flat. I mean, they were chugging along, but they didn't have that follow through power. The number one objective is that when you get in a trade, of course, you got to find your entry, your stop, your target, yada, yada, yada. But the most important thing when you get in a trade is identify a relative strength stock or index. So you have your money working for you. You want follow through. That's your ultimate target because you want to get faster to targets. You don't want to be stuck in trades. So I, this is basically what I trade. I don't even trade the whole panel here. So I specialize in the four market indices, the Dow, the uh, Dow, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Russell. And uh, I don't trade the VIX or Nikkei or whatever it is. I trade gold and oil on almost on a daily basis. I watch the charts, uh, not necessarily oil. Oil has been 
very sloppy lately and I have not traded. I j just traded for um, a few times. So I had two trades in all this week and one of them was a stop out. And the second one, I cover, basically I made money just to cover my loss. So I broke even on oil. So like I said, it's very treacherous. It has, uh, um, even though right now it's into a lot of support level, it needs to prove itself before we do anything in it. Uh, but longer term traders can look for, um, you know, specific trades, uh, swing trades and soybeans. And especially now that we had, uh, we have uh, the, um, uh, uh, we have the um, uh, China US uh, a trade deal signed, right? We saw a little bit of volatility coming back into wheat. Uh, into corn, et cetera, but it's still not ready. We And there can be opportunities. There can be opportunities in copper. Now I'm stocking copper for a possible long play because it had uh, pulled back uh, relatively quickly and strong and had like, I don't know, maybe six, seven trading sessions and on a very high volume. So that's a true indication that it may bottom out soon. But, and of course you could trade currencies and you could even trade currency pairs. So you can trade the dollar, you can trade the euro, you can trade the yen, the pound, etc. So there are other certain tax advantages that I love um, um, trading futures, right? Well, you have a lower effective income tax rate, you have simplified reporting. Um, uh, at the end of the year, you get your 1099B form and that's it. You don't have to send all the folders with all your trades. Uh, to your accountant. And of course, that is a huge savings for your account because your account is going to charge you for your day trading, for stock trading. You also have the 60-40 rule, which is fantastic if you reside in the US, you know what I'm talking about. And also a full-time futures trader may have an additional, may have additional tax benefits with trader tax status from the IRS. You can deduct your office space. Uh, anything that you buy for your office, right? Paper, toner, a printer, what have you, a notebook, whatever it is. So talk to your accountant about that. So I was talking about maximizing capital efficiency. Now you know that you can buy things on cash, you can buy things on margin, right? A two to one leverage or four to one leverage, or you can choose instead of buying, let's say, 200 share, let's say, two hundred thousand dollars worth of, and this is just an exact for the example purpose here. Let's say you have a two hundred thousand dollar account, and if you want to buy the spies, right, you buy two hundred thousand dollars worth of buy stock, um, the ETF, right. And uh, if you're using a margin account, and if you have a two to one a swing trading account, you're only going to be using half of those two hundred thousand dollars. So you're using hundred thousand dollars. But the beauty about it, and here's the thing, I love trading futures because it allows you uh, to maximize your capital efficiency by leveraging 10 to 1 uh, that is available, right? And you're basically going to have the same move in the market, but you're only going to be your, the only lucrative capital that you have is $20,000. So that is uh, uh, that is way less than that $200,000. $200, now, here's a quick example for you just to show you. Now, remember, these are not trades. These are measured moves from yesterday, from yesterday, from Friday's trading session. This is the high of the trading session. And this is basically a support level that it has achieved into the 219, right? So this is a measured move. It's not a trade by any means because the trade would have to be under 223 and you would cover at 220. So you'd still be in the trade right here. But this is just to show you the high and the low into support in the queues, right here in the queues. And this is to show you the high and the low into NASDAQ and you can see it right here. It's into the 9200. Before I um, you know, started the presentation, I was uh, giving you a brief description of, a, of, of my bio and I was telling you guys about some fulcrum numbers and about the whole uh, number theory and the psychology around the whole number. Take a look at these whole numbers right here. Now, this line, Again, it's at 9,200. It's not here. It's at 9,200. I don't know why it moved, uh, but it's at 9,200. And look at the support level is at 9,000. This is a 200 point move. It is a measure move. Again, I highlight this is not a trade. This is not a trade right here. But I just want to show you the similarities. Like if I would hide the symbols here and I've, if I would hide the prices right now, guess what? You would have no idea which one is the Q's and which one is NASDAQ. And if I do the same with the mini S&P, or if I do the same with the Dow, if I do the same with Russell, 
you would not see the difference because see the moving averages that I'm using? They are carbon copy. Look at the spike right here and we have that little hill. Look at the little hill right here. Uh, this 10 is the exponential moving average. Look at the 200 SMA right here. Look at this pivot low before the market. Look at the bottoming tail here. You have the similar bottoming tail into the 200 SMA as well. So they're absolutely identical. So that's why I have a lot of traders in my program that are coming from, uh, uh, from day trading stocks and even swing trading stocks. They're coming to trade only two hours with me. Futures. Why? Capital efficiency and also time efficiency. Now, let me share with you a difference. This is a measured move from the high to this low right here. This is about a $500 move, okay? It's about a $500 move. So if you would trade this with 100 shares, so let's say you have a smaller trading account size that does not allow you to uh, position size for any greater size. So this is an unordinary type of move that happened in the market. This is a huge move. The market does not move this way. You're usually having about, with 100 shares, you're usually having a dollar moves, and that is about $100 or $150, and that is considered a big, big move in a regular market environment. But this is actually not a $4 move here, sorry. This is the $5 move, right? That's a typo. So that would mean like if you would have a $10,000 account, right? Or if you have that in buying power and have shorted 100 shares of the queues, you would have made from the open to the close, right? So from a full trading session, you would have made $500. So this is to understand how, max, uh, how to uh, maximize capital efficiency. Versus trading... NASDAQ, right? And I, like I said, you could either trade uh, the S&P or NASDAQ. I use NASDAQ as an example because it was very handy. And actually, I did trade uh, NASDAQ on Friday. So 9,200 is the high right here, and it went to 9,000. This is a 200-point move. One point in NASDAQ is $20. So that means that from the high of 92 all the way to 9,000, that's a measured move of guess what? Right? Guess what? 200 points. That's a 200 point move. Now, 200 points times $20 per point, that is $4,000 in the same amount of time. So you can see why, and best of all, you're using about $8,000 in buying power. So you're using less buying power than you would use, uh, than you would use in trading the queues. So this is capital efficiency. You trade the queues 100 shares, right? With $10,000 or more, or, you could trade NASDAQ with $8,000 and you make more money in the same amount of time. So that's time efficiency and it's also capital efficiency. So I don't use any sophisticated indicators. You saw some of my charts and I'm gonna share with you some charts. I hope we have some time. But you're gonna learn a system that will allow you to accurately identify entries, determine technical stops, calculate targets, Trail stress-free and basically trade stress-free. You don't, if you're very excited when you're trading or when you, if you have sweaty palms when you're trading, you're overloaded in that stock or overloaded in that position, whether it's futures trade or whatever it is or Forex, you're overloaded and you don't have a trading plan. Once you have a trading plan and everything fits in, you're going to trade stress-free because you have confidence in your knowledge, you have confidence in your technical levels, that are going to help you along the way. So you have a well-established plan and your plan is basically trading for you. You are going to translate candlestick language into profits because every candlestick is different. For instance, if I'm seeing a big pull in the market all the way into a technical level, and what I used in trading, uh, which is a little bit different than most of the traders, I use confluence area. So for me, you know, just because, you know, the price comes back into a prior support zone and that is, let's say, uh, a huge support band, right, where, uh, you know, uh, traders are lining up to buy, uh, I use confluence level. So I need to see other two or three elements that are lining up in the same location for me to get in on a day trade or a swing trade. So what do I mean by that? So to me, it's not enough to have prior price action, which is support, right? Uh, I need to have a prior, I need to have a moving average. I need to have 
uh, for instance, a FIB. So I need to have another indicator or at least two or three indicators that will confirm the move, okay? And then in that location, I have certain candles that I want to like, that I want to, that I want to see. My favorite candle is the doji candle because that is indecision. So especially after you're having red, 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 and then you're having a doji candle, which is pretty much, you know, the bulls and the bears are sitting at the negotiating table and say, hey, who's going to take control here? And basically, if you have a reversal and you're taking that high, right? So if let's say the price is coming into a 50 simple moving average or a 20 simple moving average and into a prior price action support, and it is reversing at that point with, uh, uh, you know, with a doji present in that location, to me, that's a buy zone. So it's literally not thinking and just acting because the reality is that uh, in trading, there's no room for thinking. So it's all about learning. You need to do, uh, you need to know what to do. You don't learn it as you're trading. It's just like a surgeon, right? He's going into surgery. He knows exactly, you know, if he's performing brain surgery, he knows exactly what he's doing, right? He's not opening up your brain and say, Hey, Google, whatever aneurysm or whatever. And how do I do this? No, you have to know exactly what to do. So he knows exactly if there's a blood vessel that is going to pop and it's going to score blood all over the place. He knows exactly what he's going to do. Same thing here. So if, the, if, if your stop is not going to hold and if you don't have a hard stop in, you have to have a damage control um, uh, plan in place. So it's the same thing. So in trading, like I said, there's no room for average. The av what is the average? The average is top of the bottom and the bottom of the top. This is my trading setup. This is where I am right now in beautiful South Florida. So uh, basically, mastering technical by mastering technical analysis, uh, you will improve your trading because the reality is who doesn't want to have pinpointed laser sharp entries, uh, knowing where to play stop so you don't get stopped out as often, knowing how to uh, handle targets and how to set targets that are so easy and visible on charts. Uh, also have a plan for trailing and also have a good management plan in place. So technical analysis allows you to trade with precision any instrument. It can be used on any time frame. Like I said, if you're a day trader, a swing trader, or an investor, it provides accuracy, confidence, and consistency because guess what? It is a rule-based system. Everything needs to be a rule-based system. And yesterday we had a guest and she was talking, uh, her name is Valerie Fox and she, she's a Forex trader. And she was talking about the importance of having a trading plan. You should not trade unless you have a trading plan. If you don't have a trading plan, shut down your computer, go get, grab a piece of paper, uh, just write down your trading plan and then uh, come back into the market. There's no thing as having the trading plan right here in your mind. No, you have to have it on paper. And you have to trade with that trading plan in front of you for a few years, maybe three years, four years. And trust me, after three to four years, you're going to come back to me and say, hey, you know what? You were right. You eliminate fear and stress when you trade with clarity and you create focus and it helps with pattern recognition at precise locations. Uh, now I'm going to fast forward through these charts because I want to go through some other live charts and I want to have some time, five minutes for that. So basically using simple strategies, uh, you have the upper hedge in the market, just 100% technicals. And I rely basically on two setups. So I don't use any sophisticated kind of mumbo jumbo setups or indicators. I just use pullback buys and pullback, uh, pullback sells, right? Depending on the market condition. And before I started the presentation, I mean, right after I started the presentation, I mentioned that there are a few simple indicators that are going to point you and that show you uh, on which side of the tape you should be, right? And on which side of the tape the price is going to move. Well, that's super simple. You look at any chart, especially on one hour, and these are analytical time frames. And uh, yesterday I had a webinar, the, uh, not yesterday, the day before yesterday I had a webinar where I talked to a group of traders about the importance of analyzing monthly charts, weekly charts, daily charts, four hour charts, one hour charts, even if you're a tick trader or a one minute uh, or two minute trader, because analytical charts are transmitting the information to the smaller timeframes on which, which direction the tape needs to move. Uh, and especially today, today is so important for the market, right? Today is February 1st. Now the market's gonna open tomorrow and guess what? We're gonna be having a brand new 
monthly candle, right? The monthly candle is going to start originating. We're also going to have, uh, because it's uh, Saturday today, market is open. So we have a brand new week ahead of us. We're going to have a brand new weekly candle. So depending on how the price is going to trade above or below, we're going to have confirmation on where the price is going to move with almost laser sharp precision. Uh, so there are, two, there, there are only two techniques. Now, these are 2,099 uh, trading room uh, results. These were traded with one contract per trade um, into our trading room. These are all called, these are all my trades, 100%. These were called ahead of uh, the, um, um, the price moving uh, into the trigger. So way before the trigger happened. You could review the full portfolio with the good, the bad, the ugly, and all the trades with timing and everything, the exact price of the entry, the stop, the target, and you're gonna see that there are stops, uh, there are winning trades, there are break-even trades, because the reality is that trading uh, is not a, all about huge wins. Huge wins are gonna happen, uh, but trading is also about having small wins, having small losses and break-even trades. Uh, and th these are the results. You can see that some months were better than other months, but if you have traded with only one contract, all the trades that I took in the trading room, this is the result that you would have. So if you started, I don't know, maybe trading with $20,000, you would have $76,000 right now in your account. Um, so simplify your, uh, your trading. I'm a true believer in uh, simplifying your trading, decluttering, you have to have a clean, uh, you know, pretty much a very clean strategy when, uh, when into, in your approach to trading. So how many times have you been in a trade that triggered and then stopped out? Oh, a few times, right? Things happen. How many times have you found yourself chasing trades, right? I never do that, but sometimes traders have the tendency that they're missing out, right? The fear of missing out, the FOMO. Um, how many times have you started, stared at the screens, not knowing what to do, right? And that's a very scary thing because you go like, oh my gosh, I don't understand. And you squint. Guess what? If you squint and if you cannot find a trade, if the, ch the chart is not speaking back to you and say, hey, this is a buy spot or this is a sell stop. Guess what? You should not be taking that trade. You should be sitting on the sidelines and waiting because patience equals money in trading. You have to wait for the proper setup to happen. So if you're in a trading room and if you're expecting the moderator to spit trades every five minutes, there's something wrong with that. Okay, so how many times uh, do you find yourself lost, not knowing where to enter or exit trades? If you're that, if you're in that situation, guess what? You can rely on technical analysis. Technical analysis is going to teach you patience as well, because you're going to have to wait for each candle to complete, depending on the time frame that you're trading, and uh, you're going to have to wait for the patterns to complete, right? So, and also, how often do you find yourself in a trade in the middle of the news announcement, just because you don't have the discipline to wait until the news is over? So keep it simple with a structured approach. Um, time to simplify your trading, eliminate the noise, apply a systematic approach to trading, a mathematical approach that is an algo approach. Determine your entries in minutes and hours and even in advance. So in technical analysis, you pay attention to what? Natural price action. And you just have to wait until the pattern sets up. A few technical uh, indicators, right? Pinpoint hat accuracy entries, stops, targets, and they're available for free on any platform. I use the 20 simple moving average, the 50 simple moving average, the 200 simple moving average, and the 10 exponential moving average. That's it. Uh, any other indicators that you buy to, and I know they're nice, they're shiny, they promise you that they're going to be flickering, buy, buy, sells, whatever it is, guess what? They're delayed. Everything is delayed. Even the moving averages are delayed. But moving averages are dynamic support resistance, right? Because I mentioned that there are multiple layers of price support resistance, right? So that price uh, support that is formed by pure price action is one way of looking at support. And of course, if that's lining up with a dynamic uh, support or resistance, such as a moving uh, average, right? The price is above the 20 SMA, then you're going to look to buy. The price is below the 20 SMA, then you're going to look to short, right? That is an algo rich zone. So uh, price responds really well when you have that confluence area. So uh, indicators are delayed. Um, 
uh, sometimes you're going to have to pay monthly subscription and sometimes you have to pay for them up front and it's going to take you so much time to learn how to use it. And guess what? By the time you learn how to use it, you're going to find out that it's not working, right? Why? Well, because the only people that are making money off the indicators is actually the people that are selling them, right? Because guess what? If they were making money off their indicators, they would just use their own indicators and just uh, sell their house. Uh, double their money in, I don't know, maybe a month or two, and then uh, continue on their merry way. Okay, so technical analysis will provide accurate read on any chart or any instrument, will override news events, any artificial indicator, earnings, and anything that you see on the chart. So uh, technical analysis will uh, teach you how to trade price action, pure price action, watch price action, where the price is uh, going to. Is it coming close to the 50 SMA? Is it navigating away from it? Uh, it's going to show you the interaction between the buyers and the sellers. It's going to prevent you from chasing trades. It's going to tell you when the right time to buy and when the right time to sell and when to take profit at targets. Uh, and regardless of what you're trading, whether stocks or futures or forex or options, you're always going to be on the right side of the, uh, of the tape. So using simple indicators, this is today's chart, um, and uh, actually that closed yesterday, and this is the m and &E So you can see that we peaked here into the 3337, and the price gaps where, this, the blue line is the 20 simple moving average. Price above, you're looking to buy. Price below, you're looking to short. This is what we shorted right here, and we actually, last week, last Friday, we shorted the Russell because it had relative weakness, and we also shorted IWM, and guess what? it triggered lower and we made a lot of money on that. Um, and we held it through the weekend. On Monday, we collected the money and then guess what? The next day we went long. So on Tuesday, we went long. On Wednesday, we went long. On Thursday, we went long, okay? So the reality is that right now, where's the price going next? And a lot of you guys are asked, uh, we're probably asking, okay, what am I gonna do on Monday? So this is a confluence area. You could see the price action to the left-hand side that it is into support, and you could see it right here that is into the 50 SMA. This is also, uh, if you're looking, uh, I don't have it right here, but if you're looking at uh, weekly charts, the weekly chart is right sitting on the 10 exponential moving average is also a very rich, uh, uh, algo rich area. Uh, my bias in S&P is that, uh, is that if it trades under this low right here that we have into the 3200, basically it's going to start pulling back and the pullback is going to be uh, more, uh, it's going to be steeper into the uh, 3100 and 3050. And this is all based on technical analysis. And I could tell you right that by looking at two charts in less than one minute. So um, the best five technical analysis tools are surprise resistance, trend lines, Fibonacci price action, and price projections. Because guess what? If the market is running into new all-time highs, right? How are you going to predict where the price is going to go to, right? Because you need to have a certain prediction about targets and those projections are, um, um, those projections are providing you with information as where the price is going to hit next. And of course, moving averages. These are the indicators that I'm using. Um, and, uh, I spoke about them. And trading is not about, uh, you know, learning just one thing, just learning a strategy or just learning an entry, learning how to do this or learning how to do that. No, the complete trader and the successful trader knows how to blend everything because this is the struggle. And this is the number one reason traders fail because they don't understand that trading is a system and trading is a puzzle and where you have to put all the pieces together. It's not all about entries or stops. There's also a lot about position sizing, about risk management, market dynamics, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why traders fail because they don't have the patience to study every single detail that there is to study. And they think that if they know an entry and a stop and you know how to do a target, boom, they have it. But no, it's a puzzle. So the pre-planning stage, First of all, before you even pop up your, your platform on your computer, you have to check for economic releases. Then you go into earnings. You check out the earnings because let's face it, Google is going to report on Monday. And guess what's going to be in play? NASDAQ again. So also pay attention to market tempo. Market uh, is uh, um, a very well-greased machine that moves from certain times for certain times. 
uh, pay attention to chart analysis and choosing what to trade. This is how my watch list looks like. And I'm watching the futures indices. I have oil here and I have gold here. And basically I base it on the trend, the structure of the trend and patterns, relative strength, weakness, and tradable voids for price velocity. So like I said, you're not gonna be money every day, you know, but trading is all about averaging out those wins, the break-even trades, the small trades, and the, the losers. So bottom line, knowledge is, uh, knowledge is confidence, and confidence is power, and it's unleashing equals profits. So learn how to trade with a big shark. So um, why should you care what institutional uh, traders are doing? Because like I said, institutional you should pay attention what to what institutional traders are doing because those are the algos and that represents 85 to 87 percent of the market the institutions are the big sharks traders need to learn how to swim with them and i swim with the shark institutional sharks see your orders on the breakfast menu did you know that your brokers guess what they sell your data you put in a hard stop in there boom they sell it uh and algos know where your uh stop is and guess what the next thing you know, boom, they're going to hit you. There was a time where you basically put your stop a tick below your, let's say, support zone. And now everybody knows that, right? Because it's so transparent. Everybody's teaching it. Guess what? They heard about it. And guess where they're coming? They're coming even deeper. They're coming even sometimes if you're trading the S&P, they're coming four to seven points deeper to get all the stops, take the price on discount, and then lift it back up. So, um, uh, so in trading, you have to know who you're trading with or against, right? You're trading against hedge funds. So if you think that you're so smart, you know, think again, because in the market, you know, on the other side of your screen, there could be a hedge fund, there could be an institutional trader, portfolio manager, a big prop trading company, a market maker, a hedger. That's why you have to learn the whole system. So the next time you jump into a trade, think about this. 10% of the traders make money from the 90% of the traders. This um, comment that I received, an email actually that I received last night from a trader, and uh, he started his trading account. He was way less than $44,000. And Matt, he's in the trading room. Uh, he took the class and he said, Anka, once again, thank you for a great week. Little over $5,000. This is what he made this week. Okay, so he's very happy with that. So uh, trading is like driving. Trading is not that hard if you know exactly what to do, right? And all you have to do is basically cruise. So what a basic, basically what we did in the months of November and December and January, we cruised through the market. It was so easy to trade. You came in. Now things changed when? On Friday, because setups that work, and I had stopouts. I have three stopouts on Friday. I hadn't had stopouts almost all, all, the whole entire month. These are the only stopouts that I had. So the reality is that when things stop working, when you're trying to buy any kind of uh, a pullback, when things don't work, guess what? The market structure is changing, right? There's the changing of the guard. All right. So if you enjoyed everything that I've talked to you about today, I teach a uh, I teach a power income futures day trading class. It is a class that we're hosting every month where we teach you everything from A to Z, uh, how to trade the futures market. And you can use the same methodology to trade stocks and futures. You don't need another class and you can even apply it to swing trading. And we teach you strategies. We teach you um, um, how to determine entry stops, target ma management, position sizing. We teach you the market tempo, how to maximize, uh, you know, these very simple moving averages to your advantage, uh, precise timing, locations, complete technical analysis skill. We teach it in about a day and a half, uh, how, the whole complete package of technical analysis. You get the class on demanding, you get the e-manual, you get the platform layout, you get unlimited retake. So whenever we organize the next live class, you come in the class and you retake it live with us. Uh, now, this class is in November 24th to the 28th. It's a five-day class from 6 to 8.30. Sometimes it goes into 9 o'clock. Tuition is $49.95. And if you sign up by Monday, okay, you're going to get three months access to trade with me in the trading room. And these represent your training wheel. So it's not enough 
And like I said, trading is not about, you know, buying a book or buying a DVD. You have to trade with someone that has been doing it and it's successful in the market. And if you're uh, ready to come on board, shoot me an email at info at tradeoutloud.com or they're happy to talk to you on one-on-one. -on -one. We can schedule a phone conversation and talk about the class curriculum or I can send you the information over the, uh, over the email. So we know how, and I really know how frustrating navigating the markets are. This is not easy. And I told you it's the hardest thing that you've ever done. And this life course will help you start your trading career and will help you trade with confidence, give you that confidence that you need and take you to profitability. So thanks so much, David. Uh, this is a wrap. And also this concludes today's, uh, today's the course. Uh, today's webinar. I'm sorry. Today's webinar. So thank you so much, everyone, for accepting our invitation, David and I's uh, invitation for uh, the top 20 trading strategies for 2020. Um, and this concludes today's event. Remember that the event was recording and the recordings, all the recordings are posted and available on the timingresearch.com website as soon as they're processed. So from all of us here at Synergy Traders, uh, we wish you a great rest of the day, happy weekend, and uh, a very profitable trading week ahead.